Great pleasure to introduce uh, Amos Maritan. He who solves problems, as he was known in, uh, in Trieste when he was there, uh, professor of physics, University of Padua. And um, I was mentioning this morning in the introduction that physicists see things at a distance. So they can see things that uh, while we are in the experiments, in the things we probably miss, and uh, at the member of the Institute, of course. So Amos, the floor is yours. Uh, emergence of structural and dynamical properties in mutualistic ecological networks. Thank you very much uh, for the presentation. And uh, so I will talk of a very simple problem, uh, which is uh, the emergence of uh, particular structure, natural, network structure that arises uh, in, uh, in, a, in an ecosystem, uh, in particular mutualistic systems. <coughs> so this is the outline. Uh, it is about this. Uh, Okay. <laughs> so it is about the emergence in ecology of this uh, of this pattern and uh, from uh, and what it could be their origin. So we will talk about uh, what uh, what is meant by mutualistic network. Then we will present some analysis. So this is uh, it's just uh, an abusing thing to see. Uh, it can last uh, for how long we like. Uh, so just a few seconds. So this simple example of mutualistic network has just uh, uh, insects, uh, uh, pollinators, and plants, uh, flowers, or trees, or whatever. And uh, there is a beneficial interaction between them because each one has some advantage to collaborate. And uh, so this is different from uh, other cases like prey and predator, or parasitism, or other things like that. So uh, in, uh, uh, it is typical to talk about emergence uh, in, in this complex system. Uh, and uh, what is meant by emergence uh, is uh, some typical pattern uh, that occurs in complex system, uh, which seems uh, not to be originated by the complication of the interaction, but rather, they are, since they are so common, they are thought to be uh, originated uh, by very uh, simple uh, key uh, ingredient. Uh, and, uh, and the goal is to find what are the key ingredients uh, leading uh, to, the, to, uh, to this emergent pattern. And since, uh, since there are key ingredients, uh, it, is, it is thought that common to many, to many complex systems, uh, and so it might uh, uh, happen uh, that uh, this pattern that emerge in complex systems are, are, uh, are some way universal. Uni universality has grown uh, as a concept uh, in, in critical phenomena, but then it has been extended to, to, uh, to other systems. So the mutualistic, uh, uh, oh, there must be some. Okay. This mutualistic system uh, can be represented in terms of, uh, of a network. Uh, and so there is uh, some sort of uh, um, adjacency matrices. Uh, so you have, uh, first of all, it is a bipartite system. There are insects on one side and the flowers or plants on the other side. So we are just uh, describing the interaction between uh, a species, a, a species of insect with, a, with species of, uh, of, of plants. The interspecific uh, uh, interactions are neglected in this approach. Uh, of course, uh, we'll include uh, later on, but at this level, uh, we're interested just in the network uh, between the two, the, the two, subs, the two sets of, uh, of species. So there is an adjacency in matrices, the A, which is 0 and 1, uh, depending on uh, if there is interaction or not uh, between the species. Then uh, uh, there are N1 species of plants uh, and two species of, uh, of, uh, of insects. Uh, then you can define uh, what is called uh, the, the number of interactions that are turned on, uh, which is uh, this, the L, uh, which is the sum over the off-diagonal block uh, matrix, uh, which describes the interaction when they are turned off or turned on uh, between plants and, uh, and, uh, and insects, uh, which is L, it is the number of links which are present. Uh, and then the, the the potential number of interaction between the N1 species of insect and N2 species of plant, in principle, they are N1 times N2. So the ratio between the effective number of links that are turned on, interaction that are turned on, L, and the total number of potential interaction, it is called connectance, which is the probability that the two species are interacting. So C is the, it is called connectance. Then another number that is interesting which is uh, the uh, index of species I, which is uh, 
the number of partner, interacting partners that that species has. It is simply the sum over the row of the, the adjacency matrix. So the, there are many empirical data that one now has. So there are uh, data about host parasite, plant ants. Uh, so we are interested just in the, in, the, in the fourth one, which is plant and pollinator. This is just the, the mutualistic network that uh, we are interested in. So the first things that one observes, uh, <coughs> it is uh, that the connectance, uh, which is the, 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 the probability that two species interact, uh, depends uh, on the size of the network, uh, meaning S is an, the total number of species. Uh, so the connectance, uh, the fraction of species that are interacting, uh, the couple of species that are interacting seems to scale like uh, one over S, uh, the number of species, meaning uh, that the total number of interaction uh, grows linearly with the number of species. Because if I multiply by, let's say, approximately S squared, S squared times C, it is the total number of interaction, and this scale linearly with S. So it means that uh, the network of interaction is uh, almost, uh, is just uh, a little bit more, so the, there is a threshold below which uh, it, is, uh, it is start to be disconnected, uh, and uh, above the threshold, uh, it, uh, it, it is uh, more or less connected. So having C equal to 1 over S, uh, it is about uh, almost to, to be disconnected. So it is uh, just sufficient uh, for the network to be completely connected. So these are uh, examples. The, 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 the one at the top are just two examples of, of network, one with 20 species of one kind and 32 of the other, and the other is 25 and 36. And so after you scramble the species in such a way that you put all the interaction, so the dark square are just when the interaction is on, and the empty square means that the interaction is off. <coughs> So when uh, you order the species in such a way that you try to put all the, uh, uh, the, 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 turn, the, 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 the turn on uh, interaction on the top, uh, you get uh, the, two, the two matrices on the top. <coughs> so you might think that uh, this kind of, uh, of interaction network might be simply uh, some, some random things. So if you if you randomize the interaction, uh, and so leaving the total number of interaction the same, you scramble them and then you try to reorder, then you get something of, of the kind that you see at the bottom. So from this point of view, what we are seeing on the, uh, at the top uh, is not simply a random network uh, with uh, a given number of interaction, because if you scramble them uh, and then you try to reorder them as we did uh, above, uh, then we don't get uh, the same things. So you can have a measure of this kind of this uh, of this kind of uh, of, uh, of patterns, uh, introducing uh, what is called the nestedness. Uh. So, in order to define the nestedness, uh, we define an overlap uh, between uh, what that we, we look at the in, uh, the plant. So, plant I and plant J, we define uh, the overlap between plant I and J, looking up with how many uh, insects that they interact with, uh, which are common. So, K is the insect. Uh, so if they, have, if they have only one insect that they are interacting with, this overlap is one. If they have two, spe two, two species of insects that they collaborate with, then this overlap will be two, and so on. So in terms of, uh, of this overlap, you can define a matrix T between species I and J of the same kind, meaning plants, uh, I and J are plants, or both are insects, normalizing the overlap with the minimum between the degrees of each species, between the minimum of them. And then in terms of that, you define this quantity, which looks really odd, but it defines what is called nestedness. There are many definitions. So we have worked with this one, but we could have worked with other definitions. And what we will be seeing, it is almost invariably the same. So this is our definition of nestedness, which gives a, uh, a quantity that uh, quantifies how much uh, the, the structure that we have seen before uh, is nested. So if you plot now the nestedness, uh, which, uh, by the way, it is, uh, uh, it, is comp it is limited between 0 and 1, uh, with uh, networks uh, with varying number of species. So this is, uh, this is an empirical data. There are 56 points, I think, or more. 
<coughs> because we have 56 networks that are known. Uh, so you see that uh, <coughs> overall, uh, as, the, as the number of species decreases, uh, there is a decrease in the nestedness. Uh, and uh, the shadow line here, the, the shadow region, uh, gives uh, the, the, the nestedness that you would expect only based on random uh, uh, assembly. So if, if you put the same number of interactions, uh, but you put them at random, then you would get a, a, a nestedness uh, which is represented by that shadows line. So it means uh, that the random case uh, represents more or less uh, a lower bound. So nature tries to choose networks uh, that are more nested uh, than uh, random, random things. So, uh, so this is the reason why one is interested in why the network that we see have a nested larger than what you would expect uh, based on, uh, on, uh, on a null model. So you can have a better null model where instead of randomized interaction uh, uh, at, in, in, a, in a completely random way, you could say, okay, let's randomize things about keeping the number of species with which you interact fixed. So I take species one, and I see that there's a five interaction, that let me scramble the five interaction between other species, but let me keep this number fixed. Then I choose a species two, I see that it is interacting with 20 species. So I keep 20 fixed, but I scramble them. So if you, if you do that, and you compare the nestedness from the data with the nestedness from this randomization, then this seems a, a little bit better than the previous one, where we had this, uh, this uh, shadow line. It is a little bit better, but still uh, you see that there are deviations at a large, uh, large number of species. So this is a new model one. B the other one was, uh, was the number zero. So this, uh, this is a, a very important question uh, to understand uh, the structure of, uh, of this network, uh, where they come from, uh, because uh, the, 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 the ecology is an important, uh, is an important, uh, is an important field uh, due to its impact uh, on uh, our life uh, and, uh, and, and the planet itself. Uh, and in, in particular, you see that there is a decline of number of species uh, in many environments. So it, one might ask uh, if uh, knowing a little, bit more, a little bit more about uh, these problems uh, can help in some way. And in particular, the kind of, uh, of system that we are looking at, uh, plant pollinator, it seems to decline uh, quite rapidly. <coughs> So now it is, uh, how can we understand? Because the two null models that we have presented, in some way, they, 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 the, the configuration model, which is uh, the, the second null model, uh, is, not so, is not so bad. But, uh, but then what we have understood, we, have just, uh, we are just reproducing, uh, in some way, what we are seeing. But what is the reason that this comes out? Uh, so this is uh, the question that we are asking. So in order to, to set up the, 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 the framework, uh, let me start uh, from, uh, from what is, is known. So if you take uh, a system uh, where x is a vector with uh, s component, uh, and each component is uh, what is the population uh, at the given time of a given species. So if we linearize the dynamics around uh, the stationary fixed point, uh, we get uh, the, the, the equation on the right. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> This, uh, the phi matrix uh, of the linearization one, uh, it is uh, known, uh, or it is called uh, interaction matrix, uh, and it has been called uh, in this way by people like May and others that have worked in this field. And uh, if the system uh, is stable, so meaning if the, st if the stationary state uh, is stable, uh, by the way, it's not x, it is uh, the deviation from the stationary point. Uh, that x, it is uh, x minus the, st the stationary point. <coughs> If the, if the system is stable, uh, then uh, the matrix phi must have uh, that all the eigenvalues uh, have uh, their real part uh, negative. So interaction between species uh, are not known. Nobody knows. Uh, do you have a question? Sorry. Have you a question? Oh, no. oh OK. <laughs> so the interaction strength between species uh, is not known. What is known at the best, uh, and it is known uh, at least in about 60 cases, it is known the network of interaction, meaning that uh, if the interaction is on or if it is off, but the strength of the interaction is not known. So the matrix phi is not known. So what people like May has done, it is a 
something similar to what uh, Wigner did uh, for uh, complex nuclei. Interaction uh, in a complex nuclei is, uh, is very complex, of course, uh, and uh, nobody knows uh, precisely what are the interactions. Uh, so the, the best things that one can do without knowing too much uh, is say, let's say that it is a random matrix. So the, the, linearis the, linearis the, the matrix uh, of the generalized dynamics, uh, let's say that uh, it has some diagonal that's, that's set, usually it is set to be two minus one, uh, and this can be done uh, just setting the time scale. Uh, and then uh, the off-diagonal elements, uh, for example, uh, you say that uh, with probability one minus the connectance, it is zero. And uh, with probability C, the, the strength is taken from, uh, for example, uh, from a normal distribution with zero mean and variance uh, sigma square. So what, uh, uh, Robert May did uh, in the 70s uh, it was to show that uh, this obeys to the Wigner laws. So the, the, the eigenvalues stay inside the circle with a given diameter, and the diameter depends on the variance, uh, the connectance, and the number of species, which is the size of the matrix. <coughs> and, uh, and so if, uh, of course, uh, this, uh, this circle is to be shifted uh, by the diagonal element, and so if the diagonal element uh, is sufficiently negative, uh, then uh, all eigenvalues as a real part are less than zero, and so the matrix is stable. So this is uh, for, uh, for completely random interaction. In particular, they can be positive or negative. So if you take uh, a system like uh, I was saying before, a bipartite one, uh, where the off the OK, I, let me skip it. When I take the interaction of a bipartite system, a mutualistic system, I can say that the, the the off-diagonal elements uh, on the two blocks uh, that, are in, that are the species, uh, the plant, uh, that are interacting with, uh, with the insect uh, are positive, meaning that they, they are uh, a mutualistic interaction. You take it uh, again from a Gaussian, but then uh, you take the modulus of the number, meaning that they are both positive. So if I and J are interacting in a, in a positive way, also J and I are interacting with it because there is a mutual benefit. Eh? So what you get uh, is that uh, the the semicircular law become uh, something like an elliptical laws, uh, and uh, you see that they are uh, of the outliers uh, of eigenvalues that are uh, that has a very large uh, real part. So meaning that uh, if we impose uh, that the system is bipartite, uh, like I was showing, like uh, a pl plant-animals interaction, uh, then uh, it seems that uh, at variance with what happens with the, with the, in contrast with what happens with the May problem uh, where the square matrix was not bipartite. Uh, the system which is bipartite uh, is, uh, it seems less stable than, uh, than the system where there are any kind of interaction. If you furthermore impose that the system is nested, uh, then you get even worse. You see that uh, the right eigenvalue shift more to the right. Sorry, could you just explain things to me? I'm just probably to understand what 5 ij, 5 j, I draw a random number from a normal distribution with zero mean and variance sigma square, and then I take the modulus. Because I want that the interaction between me and you, if it is mutualistic, has to be positive. Okay. So having the system bipartite, or even more bipartite and nested, uh, seems not to help uh, for, uh, for, uh, uh, for the stability of the system. So we need uh, something uh, different from, uh, from stability. And uh, so it's not stability that, uh, uh, so if I, try, if I say that the system try to be as stable as possible, this is not helping for nested, because a system that is nested seems less stable than a system which is not nested. So surely stability is not playing a role. So what is then uh, the key? So in order to be uh, more concrete, instead of starting with the linearized dynamics and so on, uh, let's start with the full dynamics. Uh, and uh, I've written just uh, the simplest one, which is a Lotta Volterra kind, uh, which is a particular kind of model, uh, which is called uh, Holling type one. So there are other, there is Holling type two, and as far as I know, maybe there is also Holling type three. So we have worked with both, uh, but I'm just presenting the result for this one. Uh, no, the, the results are presented for, for both, but I'm just showing some equation for the first. <coughs> so the matrix for, for the bipartite system, it is of this kind. There is a, a diagonal element which is one, which represents the possibility of the system to try to, to diverge in population, 
then the omega part represented the competition that has, which is intraspecific species, and that one, it is, uh, it is positive. With the minus there, it means that there is some competition. The off-diagonal blocks represent the, the mutual interaction, and that mutual interaction is negative, with the, with, which, with the other minus sign, contributes to the total population, to, sorry, to the population of the specific species to increase if there is a mutualistic interaction. So this is the, the framework. <coughs> so we formulate an optimization principle in order to explain the emergence of, 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 the, nest, of the nested structure. Because we have seen that stabilization does not help, so nature must have acted in another way. So what is it, the optimization principle that we are going to, to, to invoke? We invoke that the systems try to rearrange the interaction, the partners, in such a way that the total population of the system increases. So how we, can, we have implemented this? Okay, this is said in a very synthetic way. So this is the implementation. I consider, I start from a random matrix of interaction between the two, the two set of species plant and pollinators that they have a, I give a, a given interaction matrix with the interaction strength that they have chosen at the beginning. And then for, for this matrix, I calculate the stationary state. The stationary state for this system is very easy. I have just to, to, to set to zero the part in the parentheses. And so you see that the X star, the, the, the stationary state, is simply the inverse of M times alpha. So it is very easy. So we start from, a, from an initial matrix, a random one, and then we calculate the stationary state, and then we propose a change. For example, insect I, instead of going to the flower J, now it tries to go to, to, flower, to, to flower L. So we're, t we're talking of species, not it's just one flower, okay? So species I of the insect, before it was connected with J and not connected with L, at the next time step, it could be that uh, it chooses the opposite. So it switches off uh, one and it turns on the other with the same strength that it had before. Because we don't want uh, to put too many, too many ingredients, we don't want uh, to change the strength. Because uh, that one could uh, lead to the system to, drive, to, dri to, to be driven uh, to a matrix which is diagonal, for example. Each one uh, interacts with, uh, with oneself and, and that's all. So we want to avoid a trivial solution. We leave the strength of the interaction in intact, but we change only the partner. So we, if with this change, the stationary state of, uh, of the system is that the population of, the, of this insect has increased, then it's happy and it accepts it. Okay? If uh, the population decreases, we don't accept it, and we go to another move. Sure. So, Yes, exactly. Well, why okay, this is a dynamics that we are doing. We are not pretending no, that this is the true dynamic. So, sorry, what did you say? Why, why should evolution operate with increased population size? Okay, this is a mutualistic system. So there is a benefit in, in, uh, in the interaction. There is a mutual benefit. Now, this is definition. The system is mutualistic. So if it is mutualistic, there is a, uh, there is a, there is a, a mutual benefit by interaction. So it's a, by definition, uh, it is mutualistic. Uh, so, but, okay, maybe I should say it for question, but um, the way we usually look at this is to have competition between two types. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but if the, if the population, if, uh, if the network is chosen in such a way that the whole population are high, as high that as they can, then visually there is uh, less probability that it gets extinct. So what we are seeing, uh, it might be the result simply that uh, the systems that have not uh, acted in such a way to increase their population, uh, they are more prone to be extinct due to uh, demographic fluctuations. 
we can discuss. So for, for the moment, let's accept this, uh, this kind of dynamics. Eh? So if you, <coughs> so there, there should be a movie here. But from a selfish point of view, a species. But uh, they. No, but there is no need for a mutation because uh, it could be that a species uh, likes many kind of species of of, uh, of plants. But uh, in presence of just uh, one species that they like, it goes there. If there are thousands of species that they like, they could they could choose. There could be the, the, the one that is the, the best, but is less populated. Another one, the second in the rank, that is uh, the second choice, but is more populated, and so on. So if, uh, if, uh, if I can interact with species one that has only three individuals, and, I, and that is my best choice in principle, and then I could interact with a species two, which has thousand individuals, then I can, I can prefer to go in the number two because there are more, so I have more chances. To, uh, to, to get food. And so I could I not choose the three, the, the one with three, which, is, which in principle is my best choice. I could go in the number two, which are more individual, but it's the second choice. But since I have no, so the, the time at disposal for, uh, for nourishment is... I, okay, I can do, one, one in principle could choose a dynamics uh, that avoid, that uh, is not, uh, I'm just shortening the time to go to, to stationarity, but I could, eat, I could go, I could, I could do it on a much shorter time scale if I want, in principle. But in order to, but in order not to complicate it and introduce other parameter, which is the time. from a selfish point of view. Because uh, if uh, the population of, uh, of, um, of my species increases, uh, also the other one that is interacting with me, the, the plants, uh, will have a higher population because there is a mutual benefit. Yeah. So if I, if I change partners, I will, and, I, and uh, because I, I can increase my population, also the partner will increase the population. Yeah. So from a selfish point of view, so if the dynamics is implemented in this way, oh, sorry. So this is an example how it works. Huh? So on the right, uh, you see the, how the total population increase, uh, even if the choice is based uh, on a single species dynamics, meaning one species do the, does the choice, uh, but then I look also at the total population. You see that sometimes the, population, the total population can decrease, uh, but uh, overall the system try to increase the population, and what you see in the network is it become more and more nested. And so, for example, this is an example. I don't know if uh, it is visible. So if a species I is interacting with species G, J with some, inter with, with some strength, uh, which is a 1.7 thousandth, uh, and uh, with zero interaction with species L, uh, if it switches, uh, you can see that uh, the, total popu the, the population of that species can increase, uh, but then uh, the other species can decrease. But then uh, if, you, if, you, if you calculate, if you do some 
perturbative calculation due to the, to the switch of the interaction, uh, you can see that uh, at the first order in perturbation theory, the total population also increases by the same amount uh, that uh, the selfish species has changed. So this is at the perturbative level. So what we have done uh, numerically is non-perturbative, and you can see that uh, if you do many simulations, uh, the means over many, many runs, uh, it increases steadily, whereas a single realization sometimes uh, can decrease. So it means that uh, the, the perturbative calculation, uh, even if it's of limited value, it, uh, it, uh, it seems to hold. So even uh, if one species make changes that helps only her, due to the mutualism of the system, also the rest of the system has a, has a, has a, has a gain. And the reason, uh, it is, uh, it is also very simple because uh, if I'm interacting with, a one, with one species uh, that, is, that is more beneficial for me than other, that species increases also its population. But that species is interacting with other species too. And so all the system gains uh, even if uh, each species is behaving in a selfish way. And this is due to the mutualism between, between the interaction of the two kinds of species. So this is... Uh, uh, some statistics. Eh? So if you, if you take uh, this uh, um, a model with how many species uh, is not written here, I forgot. Eh? So with a uh, null model zero, which is uh, the, what happens on, on the histogram on the left, uh, you see that the nest there is that histogram. Eh? So it is, uh, it is uh, uh, quite near to zero. Then uh, with, uh, with the configuration model, uh, it is the one a little bit more, uh, uh, more shadows in the middle. The optimized system, uh, it is the red one. This is all in one on the left. On the right, uh, you have all in two. So it is, uh, it is even better all in two. <coughs> and so you can, uh, you can do it uh, for various kind, with various, uh, varying the parameter of the model, you get more or less the same, uh, the same result. So if you, if you compare the, the, the result, uh, the, the, the empirical data, and uh, we choose the strength uh, of the interaction, uh, like, uh, like in, the, in the top right, uh, you see that you can get uh, that uh, uh, the nestedness change with the, with the number of species uh, like it is seen in empirical data. So here it is uh, to show how the nestedness uh, is related uh, to the total population. If one calculate the overlap, which is the key ingredient uh, for defining the nestedness, if you remember, the nestedness is defined in terms of, of overlap uh, with some normalized way. Then if you, if you make a perturbative calculation, uh, you see that the overlap, uh, it, is, uh, it is equal to a constant plus uh, another constant times the total population. And so it is positively correlated with the population. If you increase the total population, also the overlap increases. Uh, and so the overlap defines the next thing is defined in terms of the overlap, so the next thing increases. And so you can see also that uh, the, the, um, the coefficient relating the total population to the overlap uh, as a function of the strength of the interaction, it is shown on this graph here. And so as the strength increases, uh, the, uh, the, connect, the, 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 the link between the overlap and the total population uh, decreases. Meaning that if I have a, a strong mutualistic interaction, uh, there is, in principle, no need for me to do a great dynamics uh, in order to improve the total population of the system. Uh, if I have already a strong interaction, uh, there is no need for me to implement a dynamics in order to change and go to a better partner. On the other hand, uh, if I have a very tiny interaction with, uh, with partners, uh, then it is better I organize uh, the interaction network uh, in such a way that there is a stronger connection between the total population and the overlap. This is the philosophy. <clears throat> so this is uh, the, the, the time dependence uh, of, uh, of the nestedness in the system, uh, and uh, as uh, you increase, uh, the, as uh, the time run, uh, the nestedness increases, uh, and uh, the total population also increases. And there are three cases when the, the competition, so interspecific inter interaction, uh, is less than the mutualism, when they are uh, almost the same, uh, and when uh, the competition uh, is, uh, is winning over mutualism, uh, the total population still increases, uh, but not uh, so much. And here, uh, it is shown that uh, if you minimize the, the, the nestedness, also the total population decreases. So it means uh, that uh, 
the total population increases, the nested increases, and vice versa. Okay? Then uh, you can do another type of experiment to see the, 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 the relation between nestedness and total population, just going randomly on matrices. I take a completely random matrix with a given connectance and so on, and then uh, for each of them, so I'm just go doing an ergodic sampling on the full space of, of matrices, and I look for each of them the nestedness, how it is related to the mean population, and what you see there is a positive correlation. So nestedness and the total population are strongly correlated. So, so if we come back to the, to the stability, to the stability issue, <coughs> if you take the, the initial matrix with which I start my dynamics in network space, you see that the, the black points represent the, uh, the, 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 the elliptical law that we saw in the beginning. After the optimization for a system with 50 species, you see that the eigenvalues spread more than, than the original matrix, and uh, the tails on the, on the right, uh, here it is uh, all number less than zero because uh, we, we want that the system is stable, so we are, uh, we are in the stable region. You see that the system after optimization, it is still stable, but not so much as in the beginning. So this is what, uh, was what was observed before. If, uh, if the system is nested, uh, it is less stable. It is stable, uh, but in a weaker way than uh, the original system. So the system uh, is penalized in terms of, of, uh, of stability. The total population increases, but the system becomes a little bit more fragile. The, on the right, uh, we, we, we just report the, the distribution of the real part of the eigenvalues. The gray one is the original matrix, and uh, the other one, uh, it is uh, the optimized matrix. This is uh, <coughs> the, uh, the most dangerous eigenvalues, uh, the real part of the most dangerous real part of the, of, uh, of the eigenvalues. Uh, for the original system, uh, as uh, we increase the interaction strength of the mutualism, for the random system, the, the original one, uh, and after optimization, and you see that really the system uh, is, uh, is trying to become uh, stable. This is for 40 species and 50 species. What uh, we have also seen is that uh, the, uh, the, 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 the most dangerous eigenvalues, uh, the real part, uh, it is uh, related uh, to the minimal population of the system. So minus the minimal population of the system is exactly equal uh, to, the, it is proportional, sorry, to the, to the maximum uh, real part of the eigenvalues. So if we, this, is a, this is a result from a perturbative calculation, uh, and, uh, and uh, the, red, the red square represents uh, uh, numerical things, and you see that uh, it is really linearly related. Uh, so a system that has stationarity as a population which is uh, positive, uh, and the minimum population is positive, uh, automatically it is stable, all in one type and all in type two. So this result is not rigorous, but it seems true in all the kind of experiments that we did, uh, apart from some exception, uh, but uh, quite uh, generally, if the stationary state has a positive population, automatically the system is stable. So, just to conclude, uh, there are other systems, uh, you, have, you have talked all the day about economics, uh, economy, so if you, if you take uh, the, the, various, uh, the, the various countries and the product that uh, they do, and uh, you put the product uh, and, uh, and nation, uh, a country in, uh, you know, on the, on the on the vertical axis and products on, on the horizontal one, and uh, you organize them in an appropriate way, you see that there are nations that are producing all kinds of products, from nails to, to high tech, whereas there are poor uh, countries uh, that are producing just only few, few products. And uh, if you look at them, uh, it, they are really nested like ecosystem. The reason why it is so at the moment is not very clear, but. Uh, Maybe even here there is some optimization principle that is going on. Yes, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the conclusion. So we have uh, we have uh, uh, proposed an optimization principle that is able to explain the emergence of nested structure in mutualistic networks, and uh, we have seen how the, the the population abundance is correlated to the nested of the of the of the network. Then uh, we have seen how 
the, 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 the population of the rear, of the rear species uh, are related uh, to the stability, and, uh, and also that these optimized networks are penalized in terms of, of, uh, of stability. But stability, it's, it is saying what happens at the, at the very, at the very, at the very long time. On short times, uh, we have seen uh, that uh, it's not reported. We have, have not presented the result. Uh, when uh, you look at the perturbation, uh, it's not only the eigenvalues that are important, but it's also the amplitude that is in front of them. And what we have seen is that, uh, in a very nice way, uh, nested nested networks are able to soften. The, 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 the result of a perturbation, just trying uh, to minimize uh, the amplitude in front of the perturbation itself as the time goes on. And so after all, if you compare random system versus uh, optimized system, what happens under uh, some kind of perturbation, uh, you see that even if the optimized system uh, is uh, less stable, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a slightly less stable than, uh, the, than uh, the, 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 the random one, still they are able to absorb the perturbation and be, and be as resilient as a, random, as a random system. Thank you very much. <laughs>